Morning everyone, so we're doing some halibut and linko fishing today. Um, we're about 16 miles offshore, you can see Kaika Vancouver Island in the background. And we're just doing some vertical jigging today um, using a new power paddle from Gibbs Delta. This is a new color that just came out. I'm gonna try it out. So basically, we're just dropping straight down to the bottom. It's about 300 feet deep right now. So it's gonna take quite a bit of time to get down and quite a bit of time to get, get it back up. So. And Dave, you were saying that there's lots of halibut around? Lots yeah. of Are they right on the bottom or are they around the bottom? As long as you're close. Yeah. Hit the bottom and start cranking up. Yeah. Let's see what happens. And they'll follow up. They'll right? follow it up. Yeah. So on a paddle tail, you just keep cranking. Yep. Um, and kind of let them set the hook because the jig's so heavy. Yeah. Right? If they, sh if they grab it, shake the hook, they'll, they'll shake it off. But right. if you just keep cranking, they'll yep. keep it. They'll keep on. Got it. Race you to the bottom. Thanks, yeah. Come there. Kitty lunch. Second. Oh, I didn't get one for. <laughs> wow. Three jigs. That was fast. It was like five seconds once you hit the bottom. You got the fish on. There must be so many fish down there. Yeah, good spot. You know what? Early in the season, there's really no one fishing here. Yeah. But it's a lot of crank up. So yeah. if you have a ling cod and you see it low, yeah. keep it low. Okay. Don't lift his head out of the water. Came off, yeah. I gotta drop a little bit down to you. <laughs> if this is a wing card, nice one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's really important we don't take his head out of the water, and I don't have anybody that can gaff him, so I just. Do you want me to do it? I, I'll just. I can do it myself. Yeah. I'm just gonna drop the rod a bit. Beauty, eh? So definitely no shortage of bites. But uh, it's getting it up is another story. Where's that electric reel? <laughs> I think it's quite a ways down still. Yeah. So I should put my line back in. Yeah, you should. <laughs> Dave continues to fish because Rod's taken too long. Well, it's my third fish on the line now. The other two popped off as it came up. Okay, Rod, there's one. It's a Halley. Yeah. It's a nice one. Oh, that's a, that's a good one. No, it's not. Okay, so within 10 minutes, we got a nice link card and a halberd. And you had another one on just now, right? Yeah. That it dropped on the way up. And, and Is Rob's, your... And Rod's not seasick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's only been seven or eight minutes. Yeah. Just wait till he has to look through the camera lens yeah. when I'm catching all the fish. Are you feeling a little bit? No, I'm not feeling anything. See, I just my it from the bottom and there's another fish. <laughs> I've dropped it. I know. Oh jeez. <laughs> like a lot of times. Uh, 
there's so many fish down there as it drops down you know, the line goes slack that means the fish has got your bait uh, got your lure in the, in the mouth so i'm going to drop it down again that, that was the third tug in this drop Yeah, we've only been fishing for 11, 12 minutes. 12 minutes. We can't be keeping everything so soon. Releasing chickens. We have about 10 fish on now, and it just keeps coming off. Raw, do I need to show you how it's done? In a bit, yeah. It's their size too, right? They're all chickens, right? Yeah. Hard time to get yeah. So that's what we're using today, the pole paddle. Uh, so these guys, um, the, the actual lure body is rubber, so let me put this down this way a little bit. And you can see, as this goes down, the tail will wiggle like that, and that's, that's what is tracking the fish. Um, the challenge with this is it's, it's a pretty big lure, so the fish are catching the, the smaller halibut, they're having a hard time to grab onto the entire hook, so that's why the fish keep popping off. Dave, are you at the bottom yet? Are you at bottom almost? Still? Not there? But Dave's got one right away. The bottom? Yeah. Just... Is that, that's not fish, is it? No. Nope. Just slowly reeling, reel up and you'll feel This it. is going to be so difficult with my left hand. Oh no! What? That was one second! I lost it. Oh gosh, not good. What? Drop it again. And real. So. As soon as they get slack, they get away, kitty. That's the because the jig's so heavy. So you can't just you can't just set the hook and and stay there. You got to be reeling. I want the electric reel. Is there a fish on? Yeah. You can just reel up slowly. Yeah. I have no idea what it could be. let that one go? I would let it go. I'll get better next time I'll um... I was bringing this up and I could see a shark, blue shark, trying to eat it and he took a little, got a little flap of meat there. Six or seven foot shark. Linger. Nope. Yeah, oh, this is one. That's a beauty. That's a nice All one. Right, look at that. 
So this one, this guy, it was easier for him to take the power paddle just because his mouth is so yeah, big. Yeah, and they have a softer mouth, right? So it's easy well, you can see how the hook just tore right through. Yeah, and he's got a big mouth. The halibut got a smaller mouth, right? Yeah. Well, look how it's almost pulled the plastic off there, mm -hmm. but it's still intact. Man, I had so many chances, but I was just waiting for the bigger fish, right? This is only day one of three more days. Or day, I guess, first full day. Maybe tomorrow. And the next day. I would just get so worried when we're fishing because you, it feels so much bigger than it they are sometimes. And it's a little embarrassing when they get to the surface and the fish is nowhere near as big as you thought. <sighs> That's about 85 or so. <sighs> oh gosh. All right, first halibut of the morning for myself. 85 centimeters, not too bad. Just when uh, the max is just under 90, so it is a keeper. I'm a little bit sweaty. Um, my word, like, I lost actually a fish when I dropped my lure down to the bottom, and I was discouraged because I thought it was quite big. And right when I was like just about to click the, the reel to drop it down again, this guy bit and he stuck. So he's going into the, the cooler and we're gonna bring him home. So now the fish on, this one doesn't feel as big um, compared to the other ones. And it's not fighting that much. So we think he might be a rock fish. So releasing this fish coming up from 300 feet deep um, because the swing bladder is out it wouldn't be able to go down to the bottom. And if you toss it in the water like that, the mortality rate is actually really high because it's, it won't be able to go down, it won't be able to breathe. So we're gonna use a special device that Dave's gonna show you guys, and that will increase the survival rate by a lot. Yeah, There's so a 90% chance of surviving by using that. So this, this is a, the number one release device, equalizer, mm -hmm. right? Um, and basically it works with pressure. This, this hooks into the fish's mouth, yep. right? And it's got a setting, 100, 200, 300. Right. And you have to send the fish back at least half of the depth that he came from. So this came from 277 feet. Yep. So this one's set to 200 feet. So when it gets to 200 feet, it's just gonna open up automatically and the fish will be swimming away. Right. The swim bladder will go back in, mm -hmm. his eyes will go back in, right. and he's got a really good chance to right. right. And, and this is a law now. Yeah. If you are fishing, bottom fishing, you need to have a right. setting device. There's lots of descending devices. This mm -hmm. one's about 70 bucks. It's the higher end of the most okay. of the guys are using this yeah. one, but there's lots of different methods. Right. You can get one for right. two bucks. If you right. Like this particular fish, we can actually keep, right? Yeah. But yeah, we're just doing a demo. But there are rock fish species like, like yellow yeah, eyes. Like, you have to release, so that's it's really important to have that to make sure the fish actually survive when you release them. That, I, otherwise, it just defeats the purpose yeah. of whole point of catching and releasing them. Right. We, yeah. we try to stay away from the yellow eyes, so basically yeah. we fish whether they're not. Exactly. Right. Because yeah. yeah. I mean, this is. It's, it's easy, but it's a bit of a hassle. So and the reason we we have to release yellow eyes because the numbers are in not some great. places. Some places are not here. great. Yeah. 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 So. Okay, let's get this guy okay. in the water. So this goes on the downrigger, and we just use the cannonball to put it back down. Okay. Yeah. Right. Just hook him like that. And the hardest part is just at the beginning because he's hanging there. Once he gets, once you get him going, and you just you just do it slow. In there. But I think it's only been the last four or five years that people realize that these fish actually survive and that the swim bladders go back right. down. There's been a lot of studies on these, especially right. in California. Yeah. So they, they've had underwater cameras going down there. As, That's with, right. With the and fish. Showing, and actually, showing and actually tagging the fish. Right. And catching it again and okay. again and again and yep. again. Yeah. That's and, great. Uh, having yep. no problem. Yeah. And like magic. Oh. Downrig is up, the fish, fish is, is gone, gone. The, it's probably swimming gone. happily down there. Release That's is great. Open. Yeah. It's always quite a workout when you come here, bring fish up from 300 feet. 
one off another one. Dave doesn't look like he's struggling. Oh, he's been doing this every day. Just head down. Head down, head down, head down. Really, look at that. Whoa! Okay, nice link cut, roughly around 20 pounds. Look at the size of their head. And you can see the bait is never too big. You know, that pole paddle fits right in the mouth. Beauty fish. All right, there you have it. The first part of our Kaikit series for 2019 is completed and faster than ever. I mean, the fishing was insane as as always. It never disappoints. Um, we got our halibut and ling caught this morning and even you got your limit of lings. I got my lings, yeah. So you must be a happy camper. That's good. That's you like great. it? Yeah, I love it. When fishing is that fast? You know what, when they're biting? Yeah. yeah. You it know was. What? It's. They're not always biting like that. Are you serious? Because no. every time we've been out here, I feel like that's what we experience. No, it's just. It's just you and Rod. You're lucky. No, you're you just make that the skill. All the fish in the ocean bite. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. But like, yeah, the we'd have one rod down, bites, and I mean, it was it was seconds where you would it would hit bottom and it'd be one crank, two cranks, and you'd have a fish on, and then you'd you know maybe it'd fall off and then drop it again. One crank, two crank, three cranks and another fish on. So like you couldn't keep them off. No. No matter what you were doing. So it was a couple hours, I guess. No, not even. Hour and a half fishing? No, well, hour. we were, we had, it's about nine. We had a fish in the first three seconds. We could have finished a lot earlier, but I was just kind of fooling around a little bit, so. Yeah, so we, yeah. Got, we got six ling cod and two halibut. Two nice halibut. If you have any more questions or you're curious about um, trips to Cayuca, you can check out Dave's website at murphysportfishing.com. Um, you don't, don't just have the Cayuca trips, you have many no, other ones around fish, the island. We fish Coolit early season, Cayuca, and then Stamp River for the rest of the year. So we have a lodge on the Stamp River that we come to in September in another couple months. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, yeah, it's fantastic year this year. This is probably the most salmon, which we'll see in another episode, that we've had in this area for a long time. It's 2019 is the year of the salmon for us. The year of the salmon, and the, they're big, oh actually, we haven't been fishing for salmon. What am I talking about? They're really big salmon, but you'll see that in the next episode. Um, another thing I was gonna mention is, with these trips, I actually had someone ask me prior to coming here, and they asked if they could book, but you're already booked up. We were pretty busy, you know what, because our, our, we have about a 90%, maybe 95% repeat rate. So our customers from this year have, have priority access for next year. Mm -hmm. So we have to actually wait until their trip is complete and they have the first right of refusal to next year. So we have about a 130% in 100% occupancy business, I guess. Everybody wants to go, but there's not enough spaces. Well, this has been my fourth year and Rodney's fifth, so you can see how people just keep coming back. And I think, you know, I've been coming here for a while, but there's guys who are sitting with at the dinner table that have been here 12, 13 years, and they just, they'll bring their sons the, new year, the next yeah. year or business partners, and the word just spreads. There was people from, where, we had Idaho, Georgia, yeah. Alberta, everywhere, so. And a lot of, and a lot of these people never knew each other 10 years ago and they just keep coming back at the same time. So they, they kind of make friends along the way here, so it's good. So we have 33 guests, we run 11 boats, and uh, we're here from June 20th until early September. And what's so special about this year? Uh, this is our 25th anniversary. Congratulations! Yeah, that's a big deal, I that's guess. That's a huge accomplishment. Yeah, so that, was, that seems like so far a long time ago. Wow, did you ever think it'd be this big? and? Uh, no, Busy? no, I just came here because I like fishing. That was the beginning and then the rest, you know, as we can build build uh, accommodation and get the, the right guides and boats and stuff, we just, we just grew into it. Amazing. Well, you guys do excellent work here and not just with the fishing, but hospitality wise as well. I mean, this is the place to go if you want to catch fish and have fun. And I don't just say that all the time. Yeah, thanks Kitty. <laughs> Never, I have never caught a fish on this line of tackle before in the ocean, especially for schnook. I think we did it for coho. I don't even know how to fight it. Like it just goes anywhere. You can't like really do a whole lot with it. If he comes up and shakes his head, we're gonna scream. 